This is going to be the longest that both my partner and her son have stayed in the camper van with me. And boy, did this take a twist. But a twist to make their whole experience a whole lot better. We've got little Alfie, we've got Danielle, four days, three nights, Northumberland 250. Wait, why have we ended up on the west coast of Scotland? I didn't expect a 250 mile road trip to last 750 mile though. Which to be fair, at this point, we didn't even know what had happened anyway. We had four days and three nights. We started off at Steel Rig Force Car Park. I think that's what it's called, Northumberland 250. If you know this park up, you know why we've come to this park up. The good old Sycamore Gap or what used to be the Sycamore Gap. You see, in recent years, the Sycamore Gap the, is an actual sycamore tree that was recently cut down by some random person. A lot of stuff has happened there. It runs along Hadrian's Wall. Then randomly in the distance, I kind of noticed something that made me think. And we're walking along and I see over there, see um, those things just there big time bulls and cows and stuff and then i was sat there thinking ah, do you know what you know my, my mind's randomly strange i'm glad no one's wearing red but if you do know a lot of the history behind hadrian's wall please drop it in the comments alfie would love to know he was asking me loads of questions that i just couldn't answer correctly we were trying to come up with scenarios but it wasn't long before where this we saw where the sycamore tree used to stand apparently they think it's still alive this is the wall that got crushed when the sycamore tree actually got cut down. And we found the same view as the picture that I was shown earlier. Now, if you've watched any of our road trips in the past, the Southwest Coast Scotland 300 mile road trip, uh, Glencoe road trips, all this sort of stuff, you'll know. I really enjoy just driving along. And if we see a sign, go, oh, I wonder what that is. Let's nip in. That's where this next place came about. You see, it was getting late on in the day. We were heading towards Kilda Forest Drive, just solely because that's where we kind of fancied parking up tonight. We stumbled across this place. It was a Lake Kilda or Kilda Lake sort of resort you could go there there was a little ice cream factory we saw these cute little birds check them out Pillar. they had a big giant chair outside like a bench so you know me i just had to sort of sit on and just feel what it was like to be a small person because why not after this we jumped straight back over to the van and headed towards the forest drive i think it's a 16 mile gravel forestry track all the way through the middle of the Kilda Forest is going to be absolutely breathtaking. It reaches some amazing heights and there's a couple of things to see on the route just like this. Just pulled over on the uh, forest drive. It's a pretty cool road. You can probably see the rain is actually going sideways over there. You probably can't see it actually. We just pulled over at the Blake Hope Nick. Check this out. Yeah, I'm stood behind the van because the wind's going that way and you can actually hear me now but if we run up there Let's show you exactly what it's like. That's where we are. Blake Hope Nick, 457 meters above sea level. And it's just, whoosh, look at that. That's quite cool actually, isn't it? I don't know anything about it. Danielle's reading the, the form paperwork stuff that's all about it, but it's a lovely little view out the other side, isn't it? A couple of little seats going around. What's it say? I don't know. Anyway, it's quite cool. Look at that with the Milky Way over it. It also frames distant fells and offers views in celebration of Northumberland's endless skies. Ooh, so everything seems to be dark sky night up here, doesn't it? But, ooh, look, see? And you can look through. Look. I just reckon it's quite cool. The Nick tends to showcase the halfway points of this road. So it was time to, for us to get down the other side Alfie and Danielle to make it extra good for them. We like to give them a little bit of phone signal. There is absolutely none up here. So it's off to my second choice of tonight's park up. You wait until you see this. I was wow shocked. And then tonight's park up is quite popular. Straight out to that. It was one of those park for night finds that I managed to just sort of quickly run through. It had five star reviews. All the reviews were quite good. It's a trout fishery that's daytime only, but they charge a £10 a night to park there. Little did I know later on in this video, park for night comes back to bite me hard. It's not going to be a bad view to wake up to, is it? And we've got some chicken on the go. Oh, eh, that one. Look at the chicken. Loads of chicken for some chicken wraps. We've got donuts going in for dessert. I've only got two, so that's mine and Danielle's. Hopefully you can go out and dig some worms or something. Maybe not. <laughs> Dinner was quite cool, to be fair. And basically, as you can tell by my face, the sun's just come out for a sunset, so we've come for a little plot. Just look at how nice that is. 
How cool is that? This is sort of like, it looks like sand, but it could be less. So um, it could just be like slush. I don't know. But either way, I'm going for a little mooch. I bet this is full of animals when it gets dark. There's the van. Can you guess which one it is? It's, uh, it's that one, so you don't need to guess. So although it may not look like we've done a great deal today, still done a lot of mileage, but it's all part of the plan. You see, tomorrow is going to be the day where it's glorious sunshine, it's going to be the hottest day. So we've planned for that to be the beach day. Part of the North Coast, the North Coast? Part of the Northumberland 250 is along a coast area. Loads of beaches, loads of fossil beaches, loads of bits and bobs. That's the time we want to be there so tomorrow morning head over to the coast do a full day coastal castles caves beaches it's going to be awesome look at that for a sunset that is like truly breathtaking a bit like me <laughs> <laughs> i think this place was called font burn reservoir it's on park for night it's up in northumberland you can have a look for yourself or google it yourself it was just a nice chilled out evening that's breakfast, all done and dusted. We've got some doors open, try and demist the windows while we enjoy the sun. Swivel seat's all done, but today's the day we're waiting for, the beach day. The drive down to the beach should have took around about an hour or so, until I saw something that kind of made me think, am I going to fit through that? <laughs> I really wasn't sure. Oh, this is narrow and low. Listen for the bang. Oh, 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 that was lucky. <laughs> It's not a bad little park up right next to the beach. I'm sort of put to shame by that one and a few others down there. I think we're in a little village called Beedno. Followed a sign that says public footpath, but is that just a cliff? It's like the footpath been washed away. Or does it go to that's someone's back garden? Oh, look at that though. How nice is that? It's just a beach day today, so it's gonna be nice and warm. Wow. It's quite cool how clear the water is. I never expected that yet. Went down and had a look at the uh, lime kilns. We saw this on the little map book that we got for the Northumberland 250. So we thought we're here, we may as well have a look. So it's expected to produce cartloads of lime each year. It's quite cool actually. Straight down the harbour wall. Look at how cool that is. All the rocky sort of fossil beaches that side. Big sandy beach over that side. There's the lime kilns again from the other angle, but that, that used to put the lime in the top. We used to cook it all up, dry it all out. We used to come out the bottoms and then they used to export it out at sea all over England and Scotland. Tell us, look how clear the water is. That's insane. Great place to uh, jump off and go, weesh, plop. It's well cool here. Look at that. Now, we got back to the van and we checked the map book that we had for the Northumberland 250. We also cross-referenced that with Google Maps. And the one thing that stood out the most to me was Holy Island. It's been on my bucket list for 10 or 15 years now. And now I've got the chance to do it. We checked the tide times and we thought, oh, it's perfect. We can get there now. It's a little road that you can only really access at low tide. When the tides drop low enough, the road is accessible. So uh, let's go. We had loads of other things before that that we wanted to do. But while it's accessible on Holy Island, we'll go and do that. And the plan was to come back down and do the others. Although it does look major busy with like a full on queue going over there, but you can see the seat each side. So at high tide, the road just floods out. Danger! Do not proceed when the water reaches the causeway. So that's why there's big loops here, then you can turn around. So we're going over, it's gonna be dead slippy, this is. Me with my three and a half ton van that's front wheel drive with big knobbly all-terrain tires, which are known to not be very good in the wet. Here we go. So this literally all floods out. Parked up in the car park and decided, you know, we'll have a bit of munch before we actually go off exploring. <laughs> it's so much fun just sitting here, people watching. Am I the only one that does that? Just like really enjoys people watching, see how people do things and just general watching people try and park. It's definitely a little bit busy today. I really wasn't going to let the crowds bother me. We decided to look at where there wasn't that many people and go there first. The Priory was the first place and then we saw something walking around the back of the actual Priory. It's kind of cool. But what's this? It's like, is it a thermometer? Oh, it's a storm checker. A storm barometer. What's this? I don't understand how to read it, but it's there. And what's this one down here? Oh, that's the temperature. That's quite cool, that is. I'm gonna go for a walk now and just see what's what. They got the castle just the other side of that building, the big swarms of people walking down there. It's actually really, really nice. The weather makes this though. Check out that. Oh, whoosh. Ah, the sea fishing boats out there. It's like proper 
tropical, but like medieval tropical with the castle, the old sea fishing boats. I guess you can call this how to explore Holy Island in two hours. We only paid for two to three hours worth of parking. We went up into the lookout next and you could look a full 360 degrees around, fully glass. God, it was hot up there, but everything looked good. And then I saw this down there. Oh, oh, I wonder what that is. We decided to go for a walk. Down the harbour. I bet there's a lovely view of the castle from the end. Cracking little sandy beach just there. We sat down at the end of the pier just watching the world go by while I was on park for night and I found a mental park up. And tonight's park up, if we can get in there, is going to be absolutely mental. It's time to get up, go for a little walk down to the castle and around the castle area. It's the only part of the island we've not explored just yet. So we headed over around the back of the harbour, saw a few sculptures found the lovely little castle gardens then round to the actual castle the views around there were absolutely stunning and the castle was just as nice and we're back it's time to head off to tonight's park up solely because we think there's a lot to do around that park up on park for night i found a couple of sea view spots there was one after the other after the other so we knew we'd get into one of them if we got there early enough so that's where we headed first it was around bambra area just so that we could go into the village really start exploring the village the castle that's there the beaches and just have a cracking night however it didn't go like that this has been a load of uh, cop so we had four little park ups up the round up the rounds on park for night they work absolutely perfectly you go up there now i've got height restrictions and they've put bollards sideways to stop us parking sideways come down to the castle you've got cool castle up there bambra castle you've got to use the app you can pay to park the night we tried all that wouldn't let us do that solely because apparently there's only five bees here they only allow five to park the night but guess what there's about 12 spaces so we can't pay to park for the night here we were more than happy to but only five are allowed to stay here for the night so they stop everyone parking up the road but yeah won't let us park down here anyway just park for a bit and we'll go off around and try and see what's around there's a few things we wanted to do in this town so it's not the end of the world it is quite a grand looking castle but i'm not too sure clocks were invented back when this was built i bet they didn't have to worry about planning permission and building foundations bambra was the perfect option for us on the map it looked like quite a big sort of village we knew there's going to be somewhere to get like a fish and chips alfie was craving fish and chips by the seaside you think yeah great we went for a look around i have never in my life seen a town completely populated with pubs <laughs> there was about seven or eight pubs a castle and a playing fields and the beach that was it but all the park ups around that area were similar we didn't want a park up that was sort of on the side of a road in a lay by somewhere a bit sketchy just solely because we had alfie he's autistic we do not want to get that knock on the door so i started having a look around and at this point i'm like all the beaches are the same we can't get parking on any of the beaches. Nothing's available. Shall we just go to Scotland? I'll never forget that little look on Alfie's face when he went, Scotland? The first stop had to be the Welcome to Scotland sign so Alfie could have a picture and send it back to his nan. Gotta be careful right next to the A1, but where do we put the sticker? I've gotta get it the right way up. Uh, um, uh, right. Do I just stick it? Yeah, I'm just gonna stick it down here. There we go. Everyone can see it now. It's just there. They all want a picture, so get it. If I tell you, this was our view tonight. Camper van, parked up nicely. Woof. Yeah, that's a nice. And let this be a lesson to people, because this is parking in a golf club. They turn around and say, yeah, feel free to park here. Just come in and buy yourself a meal. So in turn, it's a free park up that we're actually gonna spend probably 50 quid after we've all eaten together and had a drink and stuff like that. But I'd pay that for this view and a really nice hot meal. So if you've got a pub, a club, or a, anything that's got a nice view, why don't you consider doing this? Cause it's massively like, it's gonna work for you. And to show it works, uh, you've got a couple of vans over there. There's even a couple right behind us as well. Just over there, we managed to get the last spot, but look at that. We were quite annoyed earlier that there was no like spots in Bambra and they've made it really hard for us. And now we're just like, nah, kind of happy. <laughs> yeah, we're happy now. Apparently it's only like a 15 minute walk to get down into the harbour down there and do all that sort of stuff. So we might, might go and do that later. Now this is what you call meal with a view. I mean, come on, how beautiful is that? I was wrong. Dinner was 40 quid and a couple of drinks. But I can't drive now. One, I've got a good parking space. Two, I've had a drink with dinner. Number three, we're going to go down into town and just sort of 
check out the harbour and stuff. Apparently, there's loads of deer on this farm, on this golf course farm. Why did I say farm? Golf club. Yeah, this is quite cool to be fair. So the harbour comes in over there, you've got the big ships tucked up around there. Whole river estuary sort of thing here with loads of boats and stuff. It's quite cool. I mean, look at that funky one just over there. Yeah. I kind of like this one. Okay, Steven Seagal's noisy. Okay, we never really expected to see this or stumble across this. Look at the size of his head. That is insane. Another one popped up just over the bay as well. I never in my wildest dreams expected to see seals in eye mouth in Scotland. Oh, I wish you could have seen Alfie and Danielle's faces. They lit up. It was amazing. How cool was that? Sun setting over the beach. Check this out. How nice is that? That's just, woo! look at him just there, just sat there underneath the water. Oh. <laughs> look at him, that is so cool. He's literally just under the water. Oh, wow. <laughs> you see Danielle's calling him, she's tapping her nails. Oh, look, there he is. Look how clear that water is. It's a, he's just sat there staring straight at us. We literally just can't escape the seals. There he is again. That's the big one with the big head. Plus that one we were just watching back there. We're walking up the hill back to the van and you can still see him just there. <laughs> what an absolutely beautiful little golden gem of a find this is. It's hard to think it's gonna be raining most of the day tomorrow when it's such glorious now. We got back to the van that night and while Alfie was unwinding, me and Danielle were sat there thinking about what could we do tomorrow? It seems like the Northumberland side of things is out the question now. It's further south, it's going around. But we had a look and decided, you know what? There's better things to do in Scotland than there is going back down into Northumberland. And I reeled off a few ideas. I said we could go up to Falkirk, we could go up to Glencoe, we could go up to the Glenshee Ski Resort. She really wanted to do Balmoral, we could do that. The options are endless and I don't mind driving that extra bit more if we need to. Alfie turned up and said, I've never been to Edinburgh. Let's go to Edinburgh. It's only an hour up the road. So we've come here. They both just want to do a few little touristy things. So Holyrood House, the Royal Mile, the castle. And I thought, great, that's just a mile walk. But I haven't yet told them that that mile walk is uphill. First up, Holyrood House. Yeah, they're just like, oh my God, look how grand that is. I like the dude stood at the top going, yeah, I'm the king. Started to walk up the Royal Mile until Alfie spotted or actually heard what Scotland's famous for. Continued up the Royal Mile, up towards uh, St Giles Cathedral. The Edinburgh Fringe was on, so it was a little bit busier than normal. Various parts of the mile were closed off to vehicles, so it was all touristy. Then it was swing a quick left across to Victoria Street. Uh, this is something Danielle wanted to do on her bucket list. It's apparently where J.K. Rowling had taken all the inspiration for Diagon Alley in the Harry Potters. I'm not too sure. <laughs> wasn't long before we reached the top of the Royal Mile up towards the castle. They're starting to set up for the tattoo, so it's not full of, it's not what it normally looks like anyway. Quick walk back into Edinburgh so that Alfie can get an iron brew with his Mackies, and then it was time for a quick drive over to Falkirk. Cracking little time in Edinburgh, but we, Alfie was a bit bored. We've come down to the Helix. That's these things here, the Kelpies. How cool are they? I must have driven past these a million times on the motorway, never actually stayed. But look. They're quite cool. They're cool little baby ones in front of the big ones. I don't know what uh, what he's doing, but it's cool. And there's a blue sky. Well, there is over there. If you look over there, it's not so blue. If you're on the uh, Instagram, she's dealing with the Instagram. Oh yeah, pose for me. <laughs> they are absolutely massive. That one looks like he's singing an Elvis song and that one's like, oh my God, you're embarrassing me. I think he needs some dental work doing. He's got a few holes in his teeth. While we're in Falkirk, there's another thing on my bucket list that I really wanted to tick off, the Falkirk wheel. If you've never seen this before, I'll quickly explain it. It's like a canal lock. The canal comes in from the top and it does a full 180 degree turn from the river at the bottom. So you can lock it from the top to the bottom easy enough. Look at this, all the tourists on the bridge up there filming people using the actual lock. You can see the boat down there? They're all filming it like, oh my God, 
But then again, they've probably never have seen that before. So what they do here, they've got a few tour, well, I've got a tour boat just over there with all these tourists about to go on it. That tour boat's then gonna come out and go into the bottom just there. At the same time, a tour boat is gonna come along and you can use this on normal boats as well. And the whole thing does a twist in the air and the bottom boat ends up on the top. It's such a massive feat of engineering, all the cog work and stuff like that. And yet it's cheaper to park here than what it is to park at a couple of horses down the road. There you go, you've got the bottom boat about to go into the bottom and up there, you've got the top boat about to go into the top of it. And then as it starts turning, the actual canal bed in there stays extremely level with the rotational things underneath. So as that one comes up, it stays level. As that one goes down, it stays level. There you go, I'll fast forward this bit just so you get a general gist of how it's working. It's fascinating, isn't it? What a cracking little site that we're on right now. Literally, there's what, three or four caravans that side. There's a couple over that side, it's just a small little thing, 20 pound a night. It's got showers, it's got everything we need. Plus, it's got that amazing view just in front of us. I guess we've got to, kind of got to thank her. What, who, who commented this one? We stuck a video up on uh, TikTok and Instagram and stuff and said we're looking for some site around this area. Somebody mentioned it. All the others were full or crazily sort of kids summer holiday overpriced. And it was it an Instagram follower? Someone commented on Instagram. I'm going to have to check his name out or her name or the commenter's name and just sort of see what he said because Robert this was William Robert William Rankin. Rankin. Thank you for this one. He commented this one and just sort of, we had a quick look, phoned him up. Yeah, okay, 20 quid a night, come in. Right, bang in, that'll do perfect. And we ran straight into a gorgeous sun looking over the Isle of Craig and the Isle of Arran. This is awesome little site. This is like proper little gem. What's it called? Thrat. Uh, we still don't even know what it's Thomaston called. Farm. Thomaston Farm. Now, on the road, you can't even see that there's a sign that says go this way. It's a Caravan and Camping Club certified one, but it's not a Caravan and Camping Club campsite. It's just really, really cool. Nice and quiet. And why is Alfie laughing at me filming myself? <laughs> and that is one good thing with the induction hob. You can see we've got a bit of wind coming in, but we haven't got a flame that it's flapping around. It's just straight on the pat, straight on the heat works straight away. We've got the air fryer going and the induction hob tonight. What an absolute beauty of a view. Just check it out. Isla Craig over there, Aaron all in the distance over there. It's just absolutely breathtaking. Mm, got a bit of chicken, some pasta with some cheese on. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Just look at that. Does anything get better than that? And that's the reason we decided to put a bench seat in the camp of an arch is hiding. But check out this. Look at that for a sunset. Setting over the Isle of Arran with a beautiful sunset. Tomorrow's going to be an epic day. Good morning from the two famous grouse. After leaving the campsite this morning, after breakfast and everything, first stop was 15 minutes north driving. So back on the way we came yesterday to the coo shed. It's basically a milkshake farm slash a cake vending machine. But last time we were here, I fell in love with the carrot cake. Nothing's compared since then. We need to get more. It's a great way to celebrate my 100th day living on the road without a job. Where is this? There it is. There it is. There it is. There. And there, and on there, and they've got four rows of carrot cake. I'm having two of them. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, there, which one? That one. Oh, look, here it comes. That was the biggest one, so I had to have that one. Here we go. Whoosh. Yeah. Look, would I be fat if I got two? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, I'll have two. Here comes the next one. Here comes the next one. Yeah. <laughs> now it's the milkshake. Whoa, whoa. So these have got the syrup in already, so you buy your bottle with the syrup in and you put it into one of these to make your milk go into it to make milkshake. There's too much choice. I mean, you've got Biscoff, white chocolate, Nutella, chocolate fridge brownie, banana, milk chocolate, there's loads, caramel. Oh, iron brew. <laughs> They've got candles that smells like coo farts. Uh, some sweets, some fancy mugs, teddies, cappuccino, popcorn, and cola flavored milkshake. What? Oh, oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm a happy boy. I spend far too much money. Two pound air freshener. That can go with the collection. Now, today's the day we're heading back down. These have got work and school and stuff like that, so we've got to get them back down, but we're taking it the long road. Last time, me and Danielle did the Southwest Coast Scotland 300 mile road trip, which we actually turned into 400 miles. The video is going to be linked in the description. 
we missed out Paul Patrick because we thought, do you know what, it doesn't look like there's a lot there, it's not our thing. And then when we got back and uploaded the video, I was like, oh my god, you didn't go to Paul Patrick, it's beautiful. So we're going to, we're going to Paul Patrick. We're going to Port Patrick today. It's a nice long scenic drive all the way down the sea with the Isle of Arran and the Isle of Craig off to our right. It's beautiful. Let's see what Port Patrick is all about. First of all, there's a load of steps up there. You've got the sea just over there. It's a big rocky beach. It looks like volcanic rock, to be fair. Uh, you've got the Isle of Man over in the distance. I think that's the Isle of Man anyway. You've got my advertising ride just there, and you've got the Alfie just there. Over this way, sort of like the harbour. Big volcanic rock structure with the flag up there. A little lighthouse just over there. That's actually really nice. It's like little and quaint and stuff. Look at how cool that is. Yeah, okay, the comments were right. It is a cute little town. Ew, now this is very photogenic, isn't it? Oh, how nice is that? I have no idea what that was for, but I think it used to kind of link up to the drain that's coming out. I don't know. Either way, it's quite cool. Let's go check out the lifeboat. You can definitely tell by looking at the sea. It's so easy out there to get stuck on or get into trouble out there. It's just so choppy and it's actually calm. Let's go climb up to the flag. I bet there is an easier way of doing it, but let's have a little go. <laughs> Um, yes, whoosh. God, I am the god of climbing beach rocks. Um, you watch me slip now. <laughs> whoosh, whoosh. Oh, yeah, there's an actual footpath. That was typical, isn't it? All right. How do we get up there? I'm gonna scramble it. All right, whoosh, whoosh. Yes, there we are with the big anchor. Look at that for a view. Ah oh, yes. Next stop on the tour, we'll come to see some Highland Coos. Obviously, she's addicted to them, so we'll let look. Let's just staring at her like, what's what? Hello, chicky nuggets. Some more up on the field, just there, and a few more just over there. It's funny how just a simple Northumberland 250 road trip can turn into a. I'm going to say a once in a lifetime experience. We never expected to come to Scotland and it was absolutely breathtaking ticking off loads of things off everybody's bucket list and Alfie and Danielle absolutely loved it. So it's now time to drop them back off at home and for me to carry on on my travels. If you're new around here, please subscribe. Thanks ever so much, guys.